Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Dragalia Lost video today talking about the kinda new thing that they've got going on here. We're gonna be talking about the gal the new units in the Rising Not it's called Rising, it's Gala Dragalia Remix. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do today. If you end up liking it, remember to leave a like, subscribe to me, comment about what you feel about currently Dragalia Remix. So here's the thing that's basically happening is that um, Gallup Manor is coming back for summer, which I, some people might have thought it was happening. Uh, Lerp pointed out to me, uh, the co-founder of Trash Alliance, that whenever an event doesn't immediately have a summon banner, it means that there's a Gallup Banner that comes up right afterwards. He was totally right about this. Uh, and then I kind of took it as like, oh, that basically confirms it. But I was expecting a brand new Gallup Banner, but instead we've got two returning Gallup Banner units. It is... Uh, Gala Cleo and Gala Mars, two fantastic Gala units. Um, also, all other Gala units will be in the um, banner, of course, and it'll be 6% rates. The only difference is that those two are featured. And I think this is the first time that they've had double featured units for Gala Banner, which is kind of crazy, but that's what Gala um, Dragalia Remix is, basically. All right, now let's look at the actual units that <laughs> kind of got the spotlight stolen, and then I'll give some more thoughts about the Gala Dragalia Remix. First up, we've got Summer Batia. Actually, before we start that, let's look at their let's look at the video. Now I have to turn off the sound because I get copyright struck by Dragalia if I use the uh, Doka music. Um, but it's okay because Summer Batia doesn't say anything. She is a Shadow Axe unit. The Summer Sparrow and Top Form fall in behind me. She looks wonderful. We have the Wave Riding Archer, which doesn't make any sense, but sure. Summer Makoto, fantastic looking man. Look at this beautiful man stepping out into the beach. Blue waters and blazing sun are a part of, both a part of me. We can tell because you've gone in a little bit less dark. All right, so yeah, that's their stuff. Let's go into what they actually do. Uh, so this is Summer Patia. She is the, or Pachia? I don't know. I call it Patia because it reminds me of my sister's name. Um, one of her many names that she has. Uh, the vice captain of the White Sparrows in a new beach attire. The great leg strength she cultivated through her work lets her race across her white sandy beaches at top speed, so look out because she's charging into summer at full speed. Sparrow Splash deals wolf shadow damage to the target and nearby enemies and reduces their defense by 5% for 10 seconds. Short Surging Sparrows deals shadow damage to enemies in a line and inflicts poison. Shareable Skill 7. Defense 15%, Shadow HP below 40% equals Strength 15%, and if a team member is attuned to Shadow, you get it. Spiro, Sparrow Spiker 2, increase defense by 5% and grant the user a unique 4 strike that has 3 increasingly powerful charge levels. Movement is possible while charging. Using Sparrow Splash grants the user the Seaside Spirit effect. When this effect is active, the user's next 4 strike will inflict poison. This effect cannot be stacked and will be consumed on use. Paralysis resistance 100%. And Poison Edge and Anti-Poison Strength 2. Uh, wait, Poison Edge and Anti-Poison Strength 2. Increases the chance of inflicting poison by 60% when the user's HP is 50% or above, and increases the user's strength by 50% for 15% for 10 seconds every time the user tries to inflict poison on the foe. When the affliction is resisted, after activation, the ability went all acting in for 5 seconds. That's kind of crazy. Well... Not crazy in a way- oh, I just realized that the screen was blocking a little bit of it. Sorry about that. Um, this is kind of nuts. Not in the way I'm like, oh, that's game-breaking. It's more like- So the main problem with poison is that after you inflict it enough times, um, it will fail. So there's like a set amount of times, or it'll become harder over time. So there's a set amount of times you can inflict poison on someone. And once you can't inflict poison on anyone, it's basically dead. Um... With this, she at least gets, like, some form of a strength boost for not being able to inflict poison anymore. Because there's definitely a thing of having too many poison units on the field that's kind of, like, a detriment to everything. I put the music a little bit lower. Um, but other than that, yeah, her stuff looks very... by the books. Now I'm putting it a little louder because now I'm afraid you can hear my fan in the background. Oops. You didn't see that. <laughs> anyway, let's continue on. I think for this one specifically, it's getting, it seems kind of like not very flashy, but I've got to stop like um, doubting Shadow's insane power 
Because every time I think like, oh, you know, Shadow, maybe this one's actually balanced. They never are. So let's wait and see. If this unit is actually super balanced, this will be the first Shadow unit in, uh... I want to say decades, but it's not decades. In a very long time, that actually feels like they were balanced in some way, but we'll see. Uh, I think she could be good, because all Shadow units are good. Anyway, let's look at Makoto now. We've got, uh, Makoto was found in a slick swimsuit that helps him surf the waves. He continues to search for his beloved cat, Michinoku. No, Minichu? A journey that takes him to a beach said to have wave-riding felines. He's also taken up a bow to land fish for cat friends. I forgot that Makoto's entire storyline is, I'm looking for my cat. If this man could not be the more perfect man, then I don't know what is, to be honest. Radiant Bolt deals light damage to the target and nearby enemies and inflicts paralysis when the user has the illuminated sunlight and celestial wave light effects. The sun and sea abilities will make his skill deal... His skill deal his skill deal more damage to, and deal extra damage to paralyzed foes. Increase the user strength by... Tw and that's, uh... Now we're on magnanimity call? Magnanimity? Magnanimous? Magnanimity? Magnanimity call... Magnanimity's call. Something like that. Maga's call. No, that's bad. Magma call. There we go. That's nowhere near correct. Increase the user strength by 20% for 30 seconds. When the user was, has the illuminating sunlight and celestial wavelength effect, the sun and sea ability will make this skill also increase the user's critical rate by 20% for 30 seconds and add 15% of the modifier applied to the critical damage for 30 seconds. Skill haste, 15%. Increases the skill gauge will fill rate by 50% benefit the whole team. Ooh, that's a really good co-op ability. Chain co-op ability... Does every- no, wait, I'm dumb. Every bow unit has this. <laughs> I just never use bow. That's why I'm like, oh my god. If it's not, um, you can correct me, but I'm pretty positive every bow unit has that. Paralysis equals shadow resistance 8%. Sun in C2. Oh boy, let me drink a little bit of this Dr. Pepper. Okay. Increase- there was nothing in the Dr. Pepper. Increases defense by 5%, grant the user a unique force strike, and grants the user the sunlight effect for 12 seconds at the start of quest. Using a force strike while the user has sunlight effect grants the user the illuminating sunlight effect, which will not stack. After the, after the sunlight effect ends, the user will be granted the wave light effect for 12 seconds. Using a force strike while the user has the wave light effect grants the user... The celestial wave light effect, which will not stack. After the wave light effect ends, the user will be granted the sunlight effect for 12 seconds again. If the user has both the illuminating sunlight and celestial wavelength effect, the radiant bolt and magnanimity's call, magma call, will be powered up. Using either powered up skill will consume both um, illuminating sunlight and celestial wavelength effects. Sunlight and wave light will not be extended by buff time abilities. Curse resistance 100% reduces susceptibility to curses by 100%. Paralyzed Shredder increases critical rate by 20% and adds 15% to a modifier applied to the critical damage against paralyzed enemies. Okay. Huh. He looked like he could be pretty fun. Especially once Bo gets the changes where they can force strike and move around, he'll be really good. I think they might have already got that, but I haven't checked, to be honest, because I don't use Bo very often. But they are planning on changing that, so... Uh, he seems good, and he looks real hot, so I think that's all you kind of want from a summer unit. Light's in a weird place because they don't have an Agito, and nobody runs, um... There's absolutely zero reason to ever run the one event that requires light, because Cayenne is so stupid easy that it's actually easier to beat Cayenne and get a better weapon from Cayenne than to actually hassle with the fight that uses light units. So, that's unfortunate, but that's the, that's the way of the game. And then you already know what Galaclea does. She uninstalls the game if you get her. She's very good. There's no reason to play. And Mars is the exact same. So, <laughs> except for for fire. And you can put him on anyone. Uh, okay. Serious time. Galaclea is still very good. I don't know if it's the case anymore, but a lot of people I remember were constantly pulling on Galabanner after they already pulled the feature Gala unit because they wanted Galaclea. Uh, so... This at least says to me that they brought her back because they knew people wanted her specifically back first, which is why we didn't get uh, Gala Cerise as the first one coming back. So it makes sense. I'm perfectly okay with that. I need Gala Cleo, so this just makes everything good for me. 
she's super powerful. She's still super powerful, even with Gal Alex. Um, Gal Mars is the almost, I think, the only fire dragon any any fire unit will ever need or want, except for maybe um, Halloween Lowen. But he's insanely good. Uh, this stupid ability that can like him make him charge, which apparently also um, summer. Summer Siren has this ability as well. Or regular Siren, I forget. People corrected me and I don't remember because I don't use either Siren. Um, and this ability here that gives him back all the skill gauge by 100% when you're done shapeshifting is just stupid. He's such a stupid dragon. <laughs> he is so unbelievably dumb. Uh, both of them are good. So, Dragalia Remix. How do I feel about it? Let me put it in this kind of way. Um, I kind of think it's nice that they're finally going to be returning um, featured gala units in something different, especially if one of them is going to be one unit and one dragon. Um, the biggest and toughest thing that I always didn't like seeing people do, but they did it anyway, was chasing gala units that weren't featured on the banner. Because people just don't understand, like, oh, she's on the banner, so I have a chance. It's like, no, dude, it's hard enough to pull the featured gala unit, so trying to go for an unfeatured one is borderline, like, Fake Grand Order rates. Like, what are you doing? Don't do it, dude. Like, <laughs> don't go for it. Never chase something that's not featured. It's not a smart play. Um, so, yeah. And it also increases the rates, which I had to talk with Lerp about this, but apparently 4% rates is better for selecting for, like, single characters or something. He's a math man, so he knows. 6% uh, is better if you just want any unit in general, but 4% is better if you want specific units or something. I didn't fully pay attention to what he had to say, um, which Lerp is used to at this point. He doesn't watch these videos, so I'm fine. But yeah, that's the end of today's video, everyone. Uh, I'm going to be pulling, obviously. Hopefully I can get one or two of the summer units and maybe Galicleo. But if I get either one of them, I think I'm dipping because as much as I want Galicleo, I really don't need Galicleo. <laughs> so... That's the end of today's video. Remember, again, if you ended up liking this video, leave a like. It helps me a whole bunch. Comment about how you feel about Gala Dragalia Remix. Which Gala unit would you like to see return back? Or is kind of like... Oh man, someone just rolled uh, Dion, which is very unfortunate in, uh, in Fate Grand Order. So that's my time to send. So that's the end of today's adventure, everyone. Have a good night, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I say good night because it's literally nighttime for me. Later!